In this Relief Maker tutorial, we're going to cover the basics of the user interface. And we're not going to dive too deeply into how to use some of the specific things that we're going to talk about. But you should be aware of kind of what you're looking at when you're looking at the interface. So the biggest thing that you'll see when you start the program is going to be the 3D work area. This is where you're going to bring in your models and be able to see them. It's where you're going to be able to orient the models relative to each other pick the right angle that you want for your relief, and, uh, and ultimately see the relief once it's been created. I'll just make a relief real quick. And there we go. The next section that we're gonna talk about is the current view section. And the big takeaway you need to understand from this is that there's a relief camera. That's what's being shown here. When you see this pink box, that means that we're looking through the relief camera and anything that is inside this box is gonna be in the relief. And you, from this view, can choose models and move them around and orient them as you want. Um, or you could even orient the entire scene. But sometimes you want to set up your relief camera and then maybe you need to make an edit that's not so easy when you're looking at it from this direction. Well, you can go to the observer camera and from here, you can modify things as you like, maybe make adjustments, and then return to the relief perspective. And your original view that you've kind of set up and are happy with is still maintained. So you don't have to find it again over and over. So observer view is basically for making edits that are otherwise too complicated or you can't get the right angle uh, to, to perfect the scene. And the relief perspective is what's actually going to be shown in the relief that you're making. The next section is going to be the assets section. And every single 3D model that you bring into Relief Maker is going to have an asset node. And these are asset nodes. So we can see the name. And then we see that we have, depending on your version of Relief Maker, a set of options. We'll get into these options more in a different video. But just be aware that here you can override your global options on a per asset level. The order that things are in can also matter, but usually does not. That's somewhat of an advanced topic that we'll get into later, and you probably don't need to worry about that for now. The next section is gonna be the global parameters section. This is where you'll probably spend most of your time for most of your reliefs. And if you have Relief Maker Pro, don't get stressed. I know there's a lot of things here, but in reality, you're only gonna to touch two or three of them 95% of the time. The basic takeaway you need to understand from here is that the global parameters affect the entire relief, unless they're otherwise overridden at the asset level. Uh, and you won't probably be doing that too often. So generally speaking, these are gonna affect everything. And the things you most need to pay attention to here are the relief type, and probably most of the time you'll be making raised reliefs, but we have some other options. The height scale, that's going to be how prominent the relief comes out. And then the output width and the output height. That's going to affect the resolution of the final output. So if you're making a woodworking project and it's not particularly big and you don't have a particularly small bit, you don't need a huge resolution. On the other hand, if you're making a game asset or some other computer graphics related thing and you need a really high resolution, well, then you'd set it here. The next section is the display section. And you probably won't play with this too much, uh, but if you need to go back and look at the relief that you just made, you can always click show result. Uh, just make sure that it is regenerated if you've made any changes somewhere else since then. And last and perhaps most importantly, the actions section. This is where you actually generate the relief. This will probably be your favorite part of the UI because when you press this button, it means something awesome is about to happen. Hopefully by now, you're pretty familiar with the basics of the user interface, and that should allow you to springboard into the other tutorials.